What's up everybody, on this quick tips video we're going to be learning how to do the Orden Blur effect. Now the Orden Blur effect is basically the sort of dreamy, soft look that is given to images. It's pretty popular these days. There's different ways of doing it. Uh, let's jump into Lightroom real quick and I can show you what people think and some people try to do to create the Orden Blur effect that is not really the way that we want to go about it. So. If you decrease, decrease the clarity slider in Lightroom, you can see the image immediately becomes very soft and dreamy. Now this is sort of the effect we're going for, but we want to be more targeted in our approach. Uh, and to be fair, I do, as part of my general edits before I jump into Photoshop, I'll take the image and do whatever I do with it, and then I'll also drop the clarity down a little bit just to start it out um, and then I'll actually add some clarity afterwards, but I'll show you that after we're done here. So let's go back to our image here. This is in Alaska, just a winter scene. And basically, the way that Orton Blur works best is when it is applied to sources of light and highlights in general. You don't really want to do it or add it to the shadows. You want to find if there's a sun in your shot, if there's bright light beams, anything that is a light source it makes it look better and more natural. So how do we achieve this effect? Well, what you do is you control J to duplicate this layer. Then you go to your adjustments layer tab. And what you want to do is create a point on your tone curve here at the bottom part of the shadows. Um, it's basically the lower third here. And then we're going to create a point on the top part where the highlights are and we're going to raise that a little bit because we want this Orden Blur to blur and also pump up the highlights so to speak. Um, if we hide and reveal we'll see that we just added contrast and brightened the highlights here. So that is step one. You also want to click this little switch down here will only so that it'll only affect the layer immediately below it because this layer is we're going to be uh, painting this in, masking it in. Next, what you want to do is make sure your layer, top layer, is selected because sometimes you might actually have the curves layer selected. So have that layer selected. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And now the amount of softness will be affected by the radius here. Um, different people have different preferences. I usually like it around 7 where it is kind of soft but nothing too crazy like this or this is too light where you won't notice it. So seven seems to be a good number for my personal style. Feel free to experiment. Click OK. And so now this entire layer is a brightening and blurring layer. So what we will do is Alt click at layer mask to hide that whole layer. Now, just like in dodging and burning, we, were, we will be painting in this effect on the select portions of the image. So go to the pen tool here. Uh, like I said, I like to have my uh, adjustments at 10%. Some people mess with the flow, which will add or decrease the amount of the uh, effect uh, if you hold the brush down over an area. But I prefer to have it at 10% and make repeated brush strokes where necessary. So grabbing our pen Wacom tablet here, which I recommend for dodging and burning or blur. Wacom tablets are the way to go. You can do it with a mouse, but it's just easier if you're painting it on, so to speak. And we will focus on mainly the sky. So it is noticeable in areas where there is a bright area and a dark area. And so the line in between that is where you will notice the blur. If you just paint only areas of the sky, you might notice it, but with, without anything that's very sharp, it won't be very noticeable. You'll understand what I'm saying as soon as we get started here. So I'm going to be doing mostly the sky here, especially around the sun, and maybe some of these bright uh, little areas that are lit up by the sun coming through the trees. So starting at 10%, I will speed through this for the sake of keeping this video short. Now the amount of passes and brush strokes will really vary depending on the image, on the light source in the image, and on your personal style. But as a sort of general rule, I, wanna, I like to limit my brush strokes to maybe like three applications per area. So I'll cover the whole sky maybe twice and then a few more times on the actual sun and maybe some of the surrounding areas and then maybe once or twice on any area that's sort of not the main bright part of the image. If I hide reveal, you can see what this has done to the image. It is sort of that 
negative clarity effect that I showed you at the beginning, but it's only really affecting the areas that I painted, of course, and it makes it look a lot better because all these areas out here are not uh, blurred out by the Orton blur effect and look pretty good. And then if you look at the edges over here of the horizon, uh, the mountains in the back, you can see what I was talking about, about painting the sky and then painting areas where the brighter and darker areas meet. So you can see you wouldn't really notice the effect if you just looked at the sky here, but if you look at this edge, you can see that distant mountain peak becomes a little bit more hazy and makes it more realistic, I think. So that is pretty much all we got to do here. And then I will not be going through all the finishing that I do in Lightroom, but I'll show you what I would do if I was bringing this into Lightroom and kind of reinforcing the Orton Blur effect. So let's merge these layers, save the image, and go back into Lightroom. Now back in Lightroom, we can see our image here, and it is looking pretty good. Now, what will happen when you add negative clarity, like last time, it will affect the entire image, but the areas that we painted the Orton Blur effect on will get affected more than the rest of it. So we can not get too crazy here, but add a little negative clarity, and it'll make these Orton Blurred areas look even better. Uh, with the backslash button we can see before and after and it is affecting the entire image like I said but mostly these areas and actually looks pretty good um, of course I would add you know more contrast and the vignette and a few other edits to finish this off finish off this image completely but you can see how much more dreamy that looks um, let's see if we can compare it to where we started This image actually was combined, this was shot in brackets and it was combined in Photoshop before this tutorial. But uh, you kind of get the idea here of what the image was looking like um, before. And then it looks super dreamy now. And then of course, whatever I would add to this afterwards. But you get the idea, the Orton Blur adds this dreamy look to your images and really kind of gives it a stylized look, uh, makes it look more surreal. For another example, we have this drone shot taken at uh, Melt Falls in Scotland. And this was also shot in brackets and combined, so that's why I was able to get the sky and some of these darker areas all sort of evenly exposed. But for the sake of this tutorial, like I said, we're just going to focus on the Orton Blur effect. So let's Control J to duplicate that layer, go into Adjustments, go into Curves, add the point down here in the lower third and a point up here in the top third and then raise that up and then click this button so it only affects the layer immediately below it we can see that has punched up the brightness a little bit if I was really nitpicking this I would probably paint in a little bit of orange here so it's not completely blown out but let's keep things simple for this tutorial here make sure we click our layer go to filter blur Gaussian blur it stays at 7 if you use that same setting it'll just stay like that every time you edit an image which is convenient and then we will alt click add a layer mask here and so just like last time we want to see where the light is in this image so I'm probably going to be painting around the sun here of course maybe some of this reflection and maybe some of the distant cliffs here to sort of give it a more hazy dreamy look and then of course the sky I might add some to the waterfall just because it's sort of a long exposure of moving water. It kind of helps with that. But other than that, I probably won't be adding it anywhere else. Um, if there was harder light hitting here, I might add some more there. But there isn't any strong shadows or anything going on in this area, so I'll leave that alone. So let's grab our brush. We'll have it at 10% as usual and get to work. So we can see with a hide and reveal layer, it has gotten definitely softer back here, a little bit dreamier. And the way I did this one was probably two passes on the whole area and then one extra pass. So I covered this cliff, uh, these cliffs here in the distance only by one uh, brush stroke technically, and then a little bit on the reflection and then on the waterfall as you saw. So if we kind of, Go through that again it's looking pretty good 
we're going to layer merge visible and just like last time i'm going to take this in the lightroom and just add the negative clarity so you can kind of see what it'll sort of look like as i if i was to finish up this image so just like last time if you bring down the clarity slider it is mostly affecting and it's affecting the whole image but it's mostly affecting the areas that we painted it in and a little before and after you can see you don't want to overdo this some people add it to too much of the image and I think it kind of detracts from the effect but just a tasteful painting of the Orton blur effect really adds to the dreamy look of your image and makes it look more surreal and let's look at our two images here looking pretty good Orton blur effect is definitely something that you should start adding to your images as well as whatever the regular editing techniques that you like to incorporate that's a wrap for this quick tips tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment or question below if you want to know anything more about this process and be sure to like and subscribe for more photography tutorials and travel content.